So the first suggestion I received from several people is I showed tying the uh, the, the stakeout rope on this uh, nylon webbing. And uh, the suggestion I received from a number of people was to use this metal piece here, which attaches to the hub inside. And uh, it's a great suggestion. Uh, I did that all around the, uh, the clam. And uh, thank you very much for that suggestion. Second suggestion is really great too. Um, I looked up who sent me this suggestion, but I couldn't find it out here. And I apologize, but uh, thank you to the person who sent me this idea. And that is the sidewalls. You know, they, they, they hook on up here and down the bottom. And what this person said um, was, you can pull these up and just clip them on top to have a half wall, which is something I never thought of but it's just a fabulous idea. And this will give you some privacy, some airflow uh, in this hot weather. Like today, it's kind of iffy, or it was iffy this morning. Uh, it might have rained at any moment. And uh, it gets a little hot in here with the walls down. So uh, this is a great solution. It allows a lot of airflow in, a lot like teepees. You know, teepees and yurts, uh, those ancient structures, they would roll up the bottom part. Even, you know, modern uh, yurts you can get this on. And uh, they have the uh, what they call the, uh, the eye to heaven above, which is a hole in the ceiling, and it lets the air flow right through. So my answer to that is, you know, when you have these half walls, you kind of get a hot bubble up here. It builds up uh, warm air over here. So I just roll back the roof a little bit, and I get some, uh, some air flow there. So I really like this one a lot. This is a great idea. And, uh, you know, the, uh, the clam shelter, uh, you know I like it. Um, when I got here Sunday, uh, Sunday night, I set up quickly and it poured. Uh, the storm rolled through here uh, with very high wind. The trailer actually shook. This is an aerodynamic trailer. It doesn't normally shake, but uh, it actually rocked a couple of times from the wind. And uh, of course, uh, I didn't stake this down and I found it out there in a field, <laughs> maybe 20 feet away. And, uh, you know, I looked at it in the morning and I said, for sure, I'm going to have damage on that thing. And I have a broken pole or a rip screen. But much to my surprise, I took it out and it was unscathed. Now, that doesn't mean it's, you know, uh, can't be damaged. It's indestructible. It can certainly be damaged. But uh, in my case, I got away pretty lucky and I think it's uh, pretty sturdy. The poles are pretty thick. Uh, the only thing I would do to improve this shelter if I was a clam engineer is uh, I would... Uh, Instead of Velcro over here on these walls, I would use buttons. I think buttons are better technology, and it uh, it'll you know take a little bit longer to put it on here, but it's uh, pretty sturdy. Once it's there, in high winds, these can start to come loose, and uh, I think that would just be a nice feature. You know, I could do this myself. Just haven't been too uh, anxious to do it, but. Uh, there you go. I just want to thank my viewers for their suggestions. I do get a lot of suggestions. I pass them on. There's no ego here. Uh, I, I appreciate whatever I hear from everyone. Keep those suggestions coming and I'll share them. I take no credit for these things. These are from my viewers. I just don't have their names. I'm out in the middle of nowhere. I'm sorry. So again, thank you. Looks like this storm, it's not clear if it's going to hit me. My weather forecast here is based on an AM radio. I turn that on. I can hear the lightning crackles. And then I just count the seconds uh, to determine how far away it is. It's about two miles away now. When you hear the lightning crack on the radio, you just count, you know, this storm is pretty close. Uh, when you hear the lightning crack on the radio, you count the seconds, five seconds equals a mile. Uh, I've heard six seconds, but I just looked it up and it said five seconds equals a mile. So I put everything away that needs to, you know, that can't get wet. And I put the roof down on the, uh, on the clam sky shelter. Now, people ask me, should I waterproof the seams on my clam shelter? This shelter has about eight stitches per inch. And look at the size of it. There's tens of thousands of stitches in here. And every one of those is a needle hole. Now, on this particular shelter, the sky, it has a... Uh, a separate fly that goes on and they can make that more waterproof they uh they tape the uh the the, uh, the seams so it's a bit more waterproof now that's usually pretty good but you got to test it you know there could be a little imperfections there also so if you want to be dry and say a traveler or an escape or those other shelters definitely seal the seams on the top 
Freedom Dove did a, uh, on her channel, did a test. I think it was an escape shelter she tested. And uh, she left it out in a wicked rainstorm, uh, really pounding, driving rain. And she found, which is no surprise, I think, uh, to anybody who's looked at it, what she found was this area up in here on the uh, on her shelter. And on hers, it would be a waterproof uh, um, top. Uh, but she found this area up here, and you know, and sometimes you can actually see uh, sunlight coming in stitch holes there. And she, you know, it's a good idea. Sometimes you can actually see pinholes uh, there with light coming in. Now that's not unusual. You can find that in a lot of shelters, and uh, you know, that's just part of the construction. When you stretch it tight, it stretches. Um, if you have a tent, any kind of a shelter, it's a good idea to waterproof the seams if you want to be dry. Now I don't care about the side walls here. Uh, because if the rain sluices off the top and runs down the side and some of it comes in and it makes the screen wet, I, I really don't care. What I care about is usable space in here, which I have a lot of. I can get towards the, uh, away from the walls and I won't be wet at all. Uh, I'm running a fan in here right now. And that fan is running off a solar panel outside. So it, it does get a little hot in here when I have these half walls down and, uh, and I have the roof on. It's like 90 degrees today, so what do you expect? So the fan makes a big difference. It's not using any battery. It's just running off of solar. So uh, yeah, it's a lot of fun living out here, I'll tell you. It's, uh, it's definitely a lot of fun to uh, come away for a week and just enjoy uh, the... Uh, okay, let me see if I can catch this. The fan is in... That's what happens when the sun goes behind a cloud and then it comes back out. The fan slows down and then it speeds back up. <laughs> it's a great thing. I wish they would uh, follow like a yurt example and put an eye to heaven up here, which is sort of a hole over the top, which uh, has a fabric slide over cover. Uh, it really would help ventilation a lot. But uh, hey, this shelter is good just the way it is. I'm very happy with it. Uh, this model is the Clam Sky, by the way. It comes with a, uh, a roof that you can put on and take off, and it comes with a floor you can put on and take off, and it comes with walls you can put on and take off, and uh, including a front door that you can put on and take off. So, uh, eh, it looks like this storm is going to miss me. It looks like from the wind direction, it looks like I see patches of blue now. So, let's see, let's see what happens. I'm not much of a weatherman. Fooling around with this wall, what I did was I used the uh, the window screen tie-outs. There's tie-ups for the screens who hold it up, and I just tied up the sidewall with this. And this is great, like in iffy weather, you put these sidewalls on, you can tie them up and have the best of both worlds. You can have the uh, tremendous ventilation and everything, and if you need privacy or you need to uh, shelter from the rain, you just untie these and let it drop down, and you have a sidewall. Uh, Rick from the Vistabule Teardrop Enthusiast Forum that Steve runs on uh, Facebook, he told me uh, when you hook on the roof, if it's very windy, it can be flappy. And what he does is once the fly is on here, he uses uh, bungee cords to stake it out to the sides, and he says that held uh, very well in heavy wind for him. You know, the yurt design... Uh, this one is good, uh, I think, up to 40-something miles an hour, and that's, you know, pushing it. You better have it all staked out and everything. The Traveler is a little more windworthy. But I looked up yurt. A yurt, a good yurt, you know, they've taken yurt and they've simplified it with this thing, with this X structure. But a regular yurt has a lot more complicated uh, lathing on the side, and it really uh, spreads the loads out over many pieces of uh, thin wood, and it just works great. A regular yurt can withstand 142 mile an hour winds. Now I'm assuming that's a full implementation, but uh, don't underestimate a yurt. It's a very, very worthy shelter. This one is yurt light. It's pretty good for what it is, but uh, you know I wanted a yurt, but they're so so heavy to move. I, I, this is this is uh, this is the uh, the portable man's yurt. And you know you you can't help but look at this and realize that they used a yurt as a model. I mean it's just that simple. You know there's no mistaking it. It's uh, it's just uh, a great design. Uh, I like designs that are based on ancient designs.